In the last video, I taught you that Monsignor Jonas Beeb is explaining that we're called to be adorers of God. Well, now the question is, how do we do that? And he explains three ways, and the three ways are not one or the other or the other. They are all three together. The first is the greatest form of adoring God, the one that he calls us to first, and that is Mass. You and I are called to become people who celebrate Mass, who uh, by our presence, either we are priests who are at the altar, or we are lay people who are in the congregation, but together we are adoring God at Mass. And if you are Catholic, you have a call to do that. There's an expression here, what do you call a Catholic who doesn't go to Mass? A Protestant. So you can see that that's a powerful teaching. If you're a Catholic and you're not going to Mass, then you are not doing what the Lord has called you to do, period. Because remember, we're called to adore God. So when we come to Mass, we are responding as the Lord has called us to do. And remember, when we adore God, He transforms us to be what He created us to be. So He transforms us that we can glorify Him by our very existence in a way that we are... Um, Everything he calls us to be, the glory of God, of God is a person fully alive. So you can see that. So going to Mass is an essential part of being Catholic, as are all the other sacraments. The second is through Eucharistic adoration, and if that's not possible, any other similar form of adoration. So we have the different forms of prayer. For priests, he explains that that practice of prayer which is the Liturgy of the Hours, is an extension of the Mass, but all of us are called to adore Christ in the Eucharist. And we do that either actually going to a chapel or church and adoring Christ, or other form of a, uh, a devotion and adoration in our own rooms, and wherever we choose to be on our property, or wherever. And then the third is adoring God in all that we do. Our very existence is an adoration of God. Now keep in mind that none of us are going to do any of these perfectly, especially the latter. But remember, you're called to adore God as you can. So in doing so, you bring whatever it is that is you. Maybe you're not feeling very well. Maybe you've got a terminal illness. Maybe you're suffering from a nervous breakdown. Maybe you're suffering from some form of intense uh, problem. Maybe you are unemployed. Maybe everything's going fine. Maybe everything's going great. Whatever the case may be, whatever situation you are, you bring that to your adoration. And that's part of your adoration, and you allow the Lord to transform you, and in doing so, over time, remember, this is an overnight thing, by your adoring God, that's what he does, because he is making you everything that glorifies him by making you the glory of God, which is a person fully alive. He tells a fascinating story in the first chapter, and something that, you know, the minute I heard him tell the story, it's like, it never occurred, it never occurred to me. Moses became this powerful prophet for um, the Hebrew people. They weren't called Jews, by the way, until Judah came along. That's where Jews comes from, the kingdom of Judah. So the Hebrew people at the time, Moses is this powerful prophet. He is so powerful a prophet, he's one of the two that encounters Jesus on the mountain of transfiguration. But when he grew up, he was Egyptian. Granted, he was Hebrew, but remember, he got basically adopted into an Egyptian family. And he says he worshipped Egyptian gods. He was uh, brought up in Egyptian culture, in Egyptian religion. And it was only when he was cast out and God reaches out to him. So if you really think of it, anyone had an excuse not to adore God, it was Moses. God reaches out to him as he does to us. And God calls him to be transformed, and what's the first thing Monsignor Jonas explains that Moses does when he encounters God, he adores him, he is obedient to him, he takes off his sandals, and he is before this God who he becomes this great prophet for. But he didn't grow up that way. God reaches out to us, and when we open ourselves up to him, he transforms us, but we begin with our adoration. 
That's a powerful teaching that each of us can truly understand. So what are the three things? Remember, they're not, intercha- they're not um, one or the other. They're all part of our life. Going to Mass, number one. Adoring God in our devotion, specifically in the presence of the Eucharist, but if that's not possible, uh, other form of uh, adoring God in our devotions. And third, allowing God to transform us and adoring God in everything that we do. And as I said in the first video, and I'm saying now, and as he points out, if you're looking for an excuse to say, I can't do that because of X, Y, and Z, because I'm this kind of person, or I'm not, whatever the case may be, that's wrong. Yes, you can. You can come to adore God and watch him transform you over time, just as he did with Moses, taking him from being a uh, a pagan in Egypt and transforming him into the powerful prophet of the New Testament, or the Old Testament. Powerful prophet of the Old Testament. Well, I guess you could say the New Testament, too, because he was on the transfiguration. And again, I'm coming to you from Sao Paulo State in Brazil. And as they say here, Deus les abençoe. Ciao.